Dr. April Brown, and I'm going to introduce her so that she can come into the studio and share her expertise, her knowledge, her experience, and her information with regards to the theme. Remember the theme for the program, the episode, it's entitled Overcoming Depression and Anxiety and Finding Intimacy with God. Overcoming Depression and Anxiety and Finding Intimacy with God. Now, for our guest. Her name is Dr. April Brown. She's a relation, intimacy, and sex therapist. She's a licensed mental health Christian counselor, certified or board certified telemental health provider, a national certified counselor, Florida certified sex therapist, and a qualified clinical supervisor. She holds a bachelor's degree in business, master's and special degree in counseling and human systems and a doctoral degree in counseling psychology, the field that she has been in since 1997. There is many more I can say about the doctor, but at this time, we just like to introduce her into the studio as we welcome her and now allow her to share her expertise as we seek to build and grow and develop as we deal with breaking out of depression. Welcome, Dr. April Brown. Yeah. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much. Hey, thank you for yes. Yeah, we, we are so glad to have you on. Thank you so much for being with us. We have a lovely group of people who are going to be making some comments and asking some questions. So I know that you're willing, ready, and raring to go. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. So first of all, let's get familiar. I have studied your portfolio. We spoke briefly some time back. Tell the people who Dr. April Brown is so that they can be more familiar with you on this platform. Okay, so yes, my name is Dr. April and I am the doctor of intimacy. And when I talk about intimacy, it's something that God has put placed on me. And intimacy is truly, in all aspects, is being fully present. Being fully present, of course, allows um, God to speak within you and it allows you to show up for other people and for yourself. I've been in the field since 1997. I started off um, prior to that in the business world, working as an accountant and stuff. And then God knocked at my door and he was like, you know, um, April, trust me, you know, he had this other vision for me. And first I didn't want to do it um, because I'm a very shy person, but I listened and I obeyed and went through. And because of that, it's been such a blessing to work with so many people and to help people overcome. And so I'm really excited to hear the questions and to provide information and to tell a little bit more about the services that I provide. Amazing. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. We appreciate you. So yes, yes. here's the first question, Dr. Brown. What is one of the most major challenge that people have in laying aside the effects of anxiety and truly pursuing an intimate relationship with God? Um, I think one of the main issues when I talk with people is that um, many times people tell God everything that's going on, which is great. They pray, they honor, and they tell him, and they sing his praises. But then they kind of like drop the mic. They leave the room, you know? And so God doesn't have a chance to talk back to them. Uh, you know? And yes. so I would say... <laughs> And this is people who have anxiety, don't have anxiety, depression, just regular. Yeah, um, I would think that's just one of the main issues overall is that people don't really learn how to hear, to listen, to sit wow. down and re whether you read a passage, whether you're in church, but sit down, not talk, not have your mind going, just sit back and listen. And what is he saying back to you? Yeah, great. So what are some of the things, if there are any techniques or 
things that we can do physically or mentally or even emotionally to try and mitigate against that so that we have the right mindset to stay, pay attention, focus, and listen? Are there things we can actually do to get there? Right, definitely. There are things that we can do to get there. Um, let me just go back a little bit since I know this topic is about anxiety and depression. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So depression, I'd like to distinguish between the two. Depression right. is usually when people um, have doubts about themselves. You mm. have the negative self-talk. Um, this thing of I'm not good enough or um, <clears throat> I'm not worthy of anything or I'm a bad person. And so how you said this things like when God is trying to talk to you, but if you have this concept that I'm no good, I'm not good enough, I'm not enough, I'm bad, I'm, you know, all these negative talk, you can't yeah, hear yeah. God. You can't, yeah. you can't really even see how God sees you. Mm -hmm. So that's a blockage there. Then when, when we talk about anxiety, anxiety is usually when people are stuck either in the past because of trauma. Right. You know, their body is, their body or their mind just feels this anxiety, this like, I got to go, I got to do something or whatever, or they're worried or concerned about the future. Right. So they're not in their present moment. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not in your present moment and God is trying to talk to you and you're thinking about, you know, Godly, I wish I hadn't done that. Or, you know, my mama did this to me. My dad did that. Or, you know, I'm worrying about the finances of next week. You miss it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in all of those things, you miss it. So one easy way of being fully present is what we call mindfulness. Okay. And mindfulness, you can use your five senses. When you see your mind going elsewhere, mindfulness is finding five things in your atmosphere that you can see. You know, mm. like for me, it's the screen thing that says power, the TV or whatever. Find yeah. five things you can see, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, uh -huh. two things you can smell, one thing you can taste. What I'm saying is you use all your body senses to bring yourself to the present moment. Okay. Wow. That's simple, but powerful. I get it. Thank you for sharing, Dr. April. What I'm concerned about is there are some things that came from family, came from culture, that people struggle with over a certain period of time, and it becomes a stumbling block in them getting that kind of clarity. You spoke about something that reminds me of limiting beliefs when you you're doubting yourself you're thinking you're not enough you can't reach to the power that people expect you to reach up to and so on but what about traditions and things that have come through the family scenario over an extended period of time does that also play a part in creating that level of anxiety exactly yes so one of the um core foundations of development is trust right Okay. And of course, you know, um, trust is something that happens over time. But let's say you were born into a family and whether your mother and father were having their own drama and they didn't mm -hmm. take care of you, you know, um, for a variety of reasons. And right. so the first couple of years, you, you are supposed to be able to trust. Mm -hmm. If you have a baby and you're a mother and you have a newborn, you provide that baby with everything. That's what they're learning. They're learning that when I cry out for something, my um, people that take care of me will take care of me. Right. That doesn't happen in childhood. And when you get up older, you realize, oh, I can't trust anyone. Mm. You know, I can't trust men. I can't trust women. I can't trust anyone. You don't let anyone in. And then, of course, it's that relationship with your Heavenly Father. And the yeah. sad thing is many people associate that heavenly father mm -hmm. or father and they related to how their parents treated them uh, even though our heavenly father is much better than either me as a parent you and i mean he's you know overall yeah yeah but we're like we can't trust what he says you know because yeah. i couldn't trust my own mother for for what she did to me how in the world am i going to trust something else right and that's how these things perpetuate and then, of course, you start to have children and you teach them the same thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. So how can we break that cycle if we find that it becomes a challenge for us and it is something that can hinder that level of peace we are supposed to experience? What can we do if we recognize, of course, that there's a cycle to be broken? What can we do to deal with it? Okay. So one way to recognize that, hey, I may need help is if you're really sitting there and you're saying to yourself all these negative things about yourself. If you're saying, you know, um, I'm not good enough. No one thinks I'm good enough. I can never do this. I can do that. And or you don't trust anyone. Yeah. 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 I can't trust my husband, my daughter, my parents, my. Yeah. And that's not how God created this world to be. That's right. And I'm not saying you need to trust everybody, but God created for us to have relationships. Mm hmm. And so if you're feeling like you can't trust anyone or even kind of like you alluded to earlier, there's some of us who don't even trust our own selves. Yeah. 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 That means that it's time for you to get help, get some right. insight because you want to learn to understand that peace. And yeah. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that your life's always going to be great because that's not what the Bible promised or anything. It's not even what God promised. We're going to have challenges. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But you learn how to be at peace, even in the midst of challenge. Yes. Amen to that. Yeah. But if you can't, if you, if your head is so cluttered and you like, let's say you can't sleep, um, you're not going to work or you keep changing your mind or what some people do, the sad thing is they rely on other things, whether it's alcohol. Mm hmm cigarettes drugs sex you know food yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. but all that stuff blocks you from that relationship that you should have with yourself mm -hmm. okay because god doesn't want you to put yourself down he created you beautifully and of yeah. course that relationship you have with him yeah wonderful thank you for sharing so I want to remind our, our audience, our people, that they can make comments and ask questions because, wow, I'm seeing some comments here. So true, what we say to ourselves is of great importance. That's coming from the studio. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for that comment. Yeah, thank you for that comment. We appreciate that. I want to go to a next level, Dr. Brown, with regards to couples. Mm-hmm. We have a situation here in our local diaspora where we see families, particularly husband and wife, having some challenges with intimacy. Right, right. And it is affecting also their relationship with God. I know you have vast experience in dealing with things like this. What are some of the things that we need to be cognizant of that can help us to address some of those issues with regards to the challenge of intimacy so much so that it will not affect our relationship with God as it currently is so doing. Okay, yes, that's a good question. And I'm going to pick up from what the person was saying about how we talk to ourselves. Yeah. That's important. It's that belief in self. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. and in this world, none of us are perfect. And don't right. Even yes, we all make mistakes. And so if you realize that you make mistakes and you realize that, hey, I try my best and I show up and I'm humble and I, when I would make a mistake, I own up to it. Yeah. All this relates into going into a relationship. Okay. People, uh, people are going to be attracted to you based on how you think of yourself. Mm. Okay. So yep. if you have unhealthy relationship with yourself, sometimes it may attract an unhealthy person. Wow. So that's really important. Number two is you really have to know yourself. Don't let other people define you. Because when other people start to define you or you change yourself or you change your values just to be with someone, that's not good at all. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. how this impacts intimacy is because then you cannot fully show up and be present with the person in front of you. Mm. And many times we built relationships based on what we saw growing up in childhood. 
Yeah. For two reasons. Number one is we have an unconscious mind. It remembers everything that happens. Mm -hmm. And then our body, there's a big thing about how the body keeps score. The body remembers every, t every touch has ever happened. Right. So when we're stressed, when we're upset, we remember what we saw in childhood, you know, just unconsciously. And we tend to, especially if it's unhealthy, you know, either verbally vomit, which I mean, just, you know, scream, yell, whatever the case may yeah. be, or we don't communicate. We shut down. We just completely shut down. Hmm. And our partner is like, you know, whether you're verbally vomiting and saying all this stuff, it's not a healthy combination. You, you, yes. Your partner cannot even hear you or you can't even hear yourself. So it's really important that if you come from an unhealthy background to get help. Yeah. To figure out how do I sit there and communicate? Okay. And when I mean communicate, I mean, so sometimes you things happen and you go through something difficult and uh, you need to talk about it. Right. If you feel like you get so upset that you have to lose your temper, you have mm. to throw things, you have to yell and scream. Then really what I tell you is you're flooded. Yes. Yes. And when we're flooded, that means the heart is racing. We cannot comprehend. We cannot hear. And what I teach people is learn how to take time out, calm yourself down, you know, so you can later on go back and say, this is what I feel. Yeah. Anytime you start saying you did this, 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 it's what we call criticism. Okay. That also will make a person very defensive. Right. Instead of saying, I feel. Okay. About what I need. Yeah. Very, very wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. We appreciate that. At this time, I just want to take a breather because that was a lot and that, that was amazing stuff. Thank you. I want to share with us the thought for the week. It's an important part of the program. And the thought for the week is that, and I think it's indicative of what we are actually dealing with now. It says, the middle of our struggles are the classrooms of learning. And if we endure to the end, we get the honor of graduating. Let me repeat that. Thought for the week. The middle of our struggles are the classrooms of our learning. And if we endure to the end, we get the honor of graduating. And that is extremely important. So I hope you get some value from the thought of the week, including all the stuff that Dr. April Brown has been sharing with us thus far. Remember, you can place your comments and your questions in the comment section and we will respond accordingly. So, yes, thank you for putting it up again, dear brother Dex. We appreciate it. Dr. April Brown, I want to look at careers and professions. I have had to deal with someone who was working at a particular job for about 25 years, but was never fulfilled. And that caused a certain level of anxiety and depression in her life, and it affected her relationship at home with her husband, as well as with God. Have this been any of the experiences or challenges that the people that you have dealt with have come to you with, saying that their jobs they think is the problem or the places where they work and how did you help them deal with it? Okay. So it kind of goes to me back to one of the first thing I talk about is hearing God. So number one, um, when people come to me about direction, I ask them, have they prayed about it? And of course, people say, yes, yes, I've prayed. And then I said, what? I said, I'm curious, though, more of what God says back to you. Okay. Because sometimes God says to jump. Sometimes he says, to walk, sometimes he says to sit still. And it's really important to understand that concept. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. even in my own life, I mean, I am, you know, I, I switch careers, but I've also, in my own life, switched um, different places. Right. 
And I remember myself being um, at a ele elementary school that a friend asked me to come and be a guidance counselor there. But I hated day, day two. I was like, oh my gosh, I like high school better. But <laughs> and I prayed and prayed and prayed. However, God told me to show up and do my work. Show mm -hmm. up and do my work. It yeah. took two years before he moved to me. Right. But in that time, he was working behind the scenes. Mm. creating a brand new high school, which is what I wanted to do, that I could lead. Right. Sometimes, just like um, Joseph, you know, one of the, um, well, the last brother, the youngest brother of the 12. Yeah. Yes, how he was thrown into something at 17, you know, and didn't get to the top till he was yeah. 30. Um, sometimes God is working behind the scenes. Yes. Yeah. And, but sometimes he wants you to, oh, go jump into um, having your own business or jump to this job or whatever. So for me to help others is we've got to discern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Because it's each of us are different and God knows where you should be. He's not too busy to have an intimate relationship with you. So some people say, oh, I'm not going to pray about that. I should be praying about, you know, my friend who's got cancer. No, pray about everything. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And you're like, well, how can I hear him? So one of the things that I suggest is to journal. Mm. Whether you, um, you know, they have the Bible um, app, which gives you a verse every day, or you pick out a verse or whatever, and you write down the verse. But then you also write, how does this verse apply to me today? Right. Yeah. How is God talking to me today? Yeah. Now, some people can um, actually hear God. Mm -hmm. Some people, they get um, the word from other, you know, Christian people. Some people, God may talk to some people on a bumper sticker. I don't know. He talks to each of us differently. But you got to right. have your eyes open and you got to be present. Okay. Yes. And when he does tell you to maybe, you know, go and apply, don't limit yourself. Mm -hmm. Have many doors open so he can close up, let you know mm -hmm. which door to walk through. And wow. have that faith. And it's scary. It's scary. When he told me to my accounting job and go into counseling, I said, God, I don't even like people on me. And I was like, okay, okay. I said, I'll apply to one school if I get in. <laughs> they leave me alone. <laughs> and that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. All so, right. but it's stepping out on faith. Right. And faith means sometimes you can't see. And God doesn't tell us the whole story because we're messing yeah. up. He tells us a little bit. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But when he gives you that little bit, take it one with you because then he'll give you more. Mm hmm. Wow. Wonderful. And I love how you intimated your own personal experience in there and, and shared with us. Thank you so much. I want to share something with you. Preach, sis. That's what Gracie Vincent says. All right. So the comments are coming in. Preach, sis. Gracie Vincent says that. Thank you for your comment, Gracie Vincent. I want to switch gears a little bit and I want to share with you, Dr. Brown, something that I believe is dear and important to you. If you can see up on the screen a picture of your podcast and your co-host, tell us a bit about the work that you're doing in this area and the impact that you are currently making in the lives of people as a result of the podcast. Okay, so um, besides God telling me to be a therapist, at some point later on in um, 2017, God told me to start a podcast and gave it the name Intimacy and told me, and I was like, God, I cannot be talking about, it actually inspired me to um, go and be a certified sex therapist. And I was like, God, I cannot do this. I cannot talk about sex and Christianity. I need to do it. And so I did. And then what I realized what was so missing in all of the whole um, sexual experience and, and intimacy with couples and all that, is that impact of having God invited. Yes. You know? Um, yeah. And people are like, oh my gosh, you can't, but God created sex. Okay? And it's it was created for pleasure for men and women. 
but to honestly to um, enjoy one another in such a magnificent way, but it only happens when you're truly fully present. Um, many times when it comes to intimacy, because of trauma or a variety of things, people are not fully present. They either leave their body in some aspect because they just like, oh my gosh, I have to do this because it's a wife duty or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Or they're um, so up in their head, like I'm not doing everything right. I just don't. But intimacy between a man and a wife, between a husband and a wife can be so and so enjoyable. That's something that those two can share. And then when you invite God into it, it's really, really important. So I believe the work that I've done is to, number one, help people to have a different view about sex. So it's not just a negative concept, okay? Number two is with sex and even with everything, um, you've got to also learn how to appreciate your body. Yeah. Yeah. And so sometimes people have a negative concepts about their body when they mm. go into um, whether they've gained some weight or whatever the case may be. And that's also not how God wants you to do because God created your body, however it is. Yeah. And even if there's a few extra pounds on it, <laughs> um, how can I put it? You'd lose more if you see nice things to your body uh, Okay. versus putting it down. Yeah. Yeah. So that's number two. And number three, when it comes to intimacy, um, it is also a form of love. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the five love languages. And if your partner, you know, needs that hug and intimacy and physical intimacy doesn't always have to be full blown sex. It can be hug. It can be snuggling, tickling each other. It's just that, that closeness, that connection. But in our culture, we're so, in our mind, think it's just got to be about this whole big aspects of um, orgasms and all that. But when we so focus on that, we miss yeah. just that connection of being together, just looking at, at each other. I just just um, earlier today, I had a couple just trying to look at each other for five minutes. They had such a hard time. Wow. And that right there is intimacy. You yeah, know, just looking eye to eye, looking into each other. Right. That right there is having that connection. Wonderful. Ah, we're gonna have to do probably a whole program just focusing on that alone. Right now, we have uh, a podcast program on this network entitled "Level Up Your Marriage," and it's a challenge that we're dealing with. So maybe we can get you to come back some other time in the future and address that specifically yes. that would be great so my brother is saying amen amen lbw radio producer in the background there because he's identifying it resonates with him what you're saying with regards to this challenge that is so real among our people so dr brown in terms of mentorship with regards to let's say for example and when i say mentorship i mean in terms of the experience that you have had over the years and, and the portfolio that you have built up, are there a group of people or maybe one person in particular, some people choose just one person, that you are currently mentoring, that you are sharing some of your trade secrets? Let me put it that way. So that sometime in the future, you could see you invest in, I'm going to invest Dr. April Brown in these people or this person so that you can have a wider coverage of reaching and impacting people in a positive way. Are you currently involved in that level of mentorship right now? <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yeah. One of the things that I do is I mentor other counselors in helping them create their own private practice. So yeah. I have about 15 of them underneath me. Right. And I've mentored people, you know, that are, you know, um, uh, they've, taking what I've had and they've gone. So the difference between what I do with my interns is that I help them create their own private practice. Okay. So it's not like they're working for me. I help because I'm also a business person. Right. So I teach them how to brand, how to all my skills so they can create something of their own. 
Because a business, to be honest with you, it's like a little baby. Right. <laughs> it's a child, you know? <laughs> There's a, little, yeah. a lot of different aspects. So, and for some people, um, relationship things is what they're really focusing on, some of the things that I do. So yeah. I pass that information because I know I've been blessed that people have provided things for me and I mm -hmm. love to give back. Right. I think that's, right. that's what this world's about. Okay. Yes. Yeah quite true that's that's very very sound and i love that you're doing that that's a wonderful thing uh as you as you were speaking i i am thinking about some families that i have had to deal with in terms of advising them and there are times when we have serious issues with regards to dysfunctionality um there are some people in families who just can't get along with each other for years, they, they have not spoken to each other. And there's always that level of anxiety with regards to the relationships. Have you had the experience of dealing with those kind of challenges? And if so, how did you advise them to, to deal with these challenges, to respond to that kind of dysfunctionality? Okay, so when it comes to relationships, and especially when they're very heated and dysfunction, I'll, I'll be honest with you, in, in a relationships, especially when there's been abuse, many times um, if you're in one of those relationships and let's say you've tried to get out and you get out and you come back, you get out and you come back, um, that's somewhat normal. Yeah. Sometimes it takes seven times before a person finally leaves. Wow. Okay. Well, what yeah. happens is that this person um, many times have told their friends, their family, maybe even their pastor, and people get fed up. And they're like, why are you still in this relationship? You should have left a long time ago. Or yeah. you left and we helped you and you went back. Hmm. And then they stop becoming um, close with this person. And the, the perpetrator is doing all this and keeps them very um, to themselves. Yeah. yeah. That they have no one. Right. And that is such a sad thing. And, and for people that have worked with me, I stay with them through the whole process. Okay. So even if you go and you leave your husband or wife and then you decide to go back, I'm still going to be with you. Okay. Okay. Because many times I have to help you become a strong person because sometimes what happens, to be honest with you, is that going back to that little person, Sometimes our child inside of us, our inner child is not healed. Mm, and yeah. if you've been abandoned by your father, your mother, and a variety of other people, then you in a, end up in an abusive relationship. It is tremendously very hard for you to walk away. Sometimes yeah. you don't have the skill. Wow. That little person inside has to be healed mm -hmm. to know that I am worth it. Yes. Yes. I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing is to teach people how much they're worth because many times people don't know. And I, mm -hmm. ask, them, I ask them, who am I? And they're like, I don't know. I said, well, if you don't know, then that's time for us to help teach them again about the prayer. Who does God say you are? Yes. You know, yes. and then building up the skills. And for some people, we can do this straight through talk therapy, which is wonderful. For others, um, maybe there's genetic as uh, aspects that your, your mind doesn't function as well or you get very anxious. And some people may need medication and that's okay. Mm -hmm. That is okay. I'm not a proponent that say you, nobody needs medication, but sometimes that does help. Right. And then sometimes it helps to go back and do some really work on trauma. Mm -hmm. Yes, because we carry so many bags and god does not want us to be overloaded yeah definitely wonderful thank you for sharing have you done any publications i, I did not really do that deep a dive into the information that we looked at in terms of writing stuff and putting it out there in books or publications have you done any of that yes yes i have seven books out on amazon called improving intimacy Right. Um, the first one is very, um, it's, and these books are very um, easy reading books, okay? So, yeah. yeah, so if you're out there, you're like, I don't really like to read much. It's very easy reading books. Um, 
that you'll be able to read. But it gives you just little tippets or tools. So there's one, of course, about that relationship with God. There's one about self. There's okay. one about um, everyday romance. Mm. You know? Just yeah. that everyday stuff as a couple. Of course, there's one about the sexual intimacy. And then um, I took intimacy and I also applied it in other situations. Okay. How can you have an intimate, strong connection with your children? Right. Your young children, your adult children. Also intimacy in the sense with the community. Mm -hmm. Because to be honest, we are all connected. Yeah, yeah. And then of course, going back to one of the questions you asked, how do we have it in the workforce? Yeah. Yes. Exactly, exactly. All right, wonderful. So they can go on Amazon and look up your works. It's good to know. I'm looking at an area where so many people don't want to speak about, they don't want to deal with, and it's an area of grief. You know, we will lose a loved one at some point in time, or unfortunately, some people would lose a, a child in childbirth, that process, and it's very traumatic. Have you had the experience of dealing with people who seek your counsel and advice with grieving in those instances yes i have and you're right um there's going to be loss mm -hmm. you know and with loss um we have to grieve yeah and i know for sometimes we grow up thinking we should always be strong and not to cry but that's not biblical yeah it's so they said there's a time for everything right and with grief grief impacts us all in different ways and with grief, it sometimes takes time. It's not something that you will just get over like that because you miss that person. Right. You, you want that person. You know, you're like, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it. However, I, as it goes along, and, it, and then I also really depends on everybody's belief system, where you believe people go. But with grief, one of the ways to work through it is talking it out. Mm. You know, whether yeah. it's writing the person a letter, stating it out, or talking it out. Another way to honor someone is to live the life that you know that your loved one would want you to live. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's being, it's being, being there in that aspect. But we're all going to die. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And grief is just one of those natural processes. That has to happen in life. Yeah. Yeah, but why why is it such a, a challenge for people? I mean, we like I said before, we don't even want to talk about it. And we have all these preconceived notions that one thinks, okay, we should just pretend that everything is okay. As you alluded to, we don't want to cry because we feel that it might look like weakness, not realizing that that is the opportunity for us to get relief and release. And in some instances, people just, their whole personalities change. Are there any specific ways, techniques, thought processes that we can adopt to help us deal with the challenge should we have come into a situation where we, we just don't know how to manage it? Right. So, Andy, I don't know about you, but growing up in South Carolina as a Black person, even as I was younger, I was told that I wasn't supposed to cry. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. 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 You're going to cry, you know, or you got to get the switch out and stuff. So one mm. of the things is that we have to stop telling our children that it's wrong to cry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is okay to cry. And mm. when you lose someone, of course, you're going to be heartbroken. You're going to cry, which is great. Because what happens is we don't want to cry or we're so upset. We're like, oh, Maybe I should get a glass of wine so it doesn't come out. Yeah. You know what I'm getting? I, I'm yeah, using yeah. more and more substance mm -hmm. or some I pills or whatever. It is okay to feel. It is okay to feel. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Believe me, that feeling's not going to last forever, but you got to let it out. Yes. If you're going around and you've had this pain and you're like, I'm just not going to break down, I'm going to go to work, I'm going to pretend everything's okay, because 
the other thing I, which I didn't even go into, it's, you know, because of what we see on social media and all that, you know, we don't want ever, everybody to know that we're weak. It is okay to show feelings. In fact, Jesus showed feelings. Jesus yeah. wept. It did yeah. not mean he was weak. Mm, wow. That's powerful. Yes, yes. You crying and letting it out is actually, I'm strong. I'm okay to cry and let it out. I understand I have emotions. Yeah, that's a wonderful thing for us to recognize that it is not a sign of weakness, but it rather is a sign of strength. And it's a reality of knowing that we are human mm -hmm. and that we can deal with those situations. You spoke about that intimacy with community and you spoke about intimacy with children. We have a, a common sort of challenge across a wide area of societies where parents are struggling to have that kind of relationship with their children. There's a lot of anxiety surrounding their children going to certain schools because of the environment, the culture, there's violence, there's bullying and so on. How do we counsel parents to create that environment where even though there may be those challenges existing, they can still find ways to develop that relationship between them and the children so that at least the children know that when they get back home or maybe in the middle of a challenge there's that comfortable thought that mommy and daddy really cares because the level of intimacy is there and it's something they know they can depend on okay so there's two parts to that <clears throat> one part is i know as adults and i'm in my 50s <laughs> Growing up, how can I put it? Uh, we weren't ever, we didn't ever talk back. I mean, mm. if mama said X, Y, you know, we try to say something that was totally disrespectful. Right. But there's a new generation out there and they have opinions. And, um, and we want your children, because I looked at myself, because um, I had a, of a daughter, that I was really her first employer. Okay. Okay, so I, I look at it from that aspect. So I want her to have opinions because mm -hmm. I didn't want her to go through and just say yes to everything and just be a yes, you know. But yeah. it's how you say your opinions. It's how you approach your subject. Okay, so when you have preteens and teenagers, number one, remember that you don't have to discipline them right away. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. They did something and you're, you're upset. One of the good things to do, instead of just telling them to shut up and, you know, go in their room and take away, you know, the phone for whatever, is to have them journal up what they want to say. Have yeah. them write it out. But sometimes you may be too frustrated that you cannot hear it. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when I tell people, it's maybe even have a notebook. I had a notebook that went back and forth. Okay. Between my daughter and I. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. would write out all her feelings and all what she thought and all this kind of stuff. And then I would read it in a calmer way, state, and be able to respond back. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she learned that, hey, I can express myself, but there's a time and a place to express yourself. Right. Number two is you always, you shouldn't put your kids down. Ever. Mm, right. Okay? Don't be shocked for if they make mistakes. In fact, I wanted her to make a mistake between, you know, zero and 18 underneath my roof. Right. Not when she was, you know, grown or whatever. Yeah, you want them to make a mistake. So, and they're going to make mistakes. They may lie or they may do this or that. But if you already know that this may happen and you're prepared for it, it's so much different. Yeah. When it's, when it's a shock to you. Right. And use every moment in teaching them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, watch TV with them, see what they're watching, whatever they're watching. Oh, so what'd you do? I'm thinking I would do this. You want to understand how they process information. You want to get really close in, in with them. And you should always uplift them and say how much you love them. Because this is when you and I, Andy, were in middle school, high school or whatever, we may have had bullies, but we left them at home. Yeah. And we were home. Our kids right. are not like that these days. Because mm. we have the internet, we 
you have all these phones. You know how much negative messages. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 So it is important when you're home with them to let them know how much you love them. Right. You know what I'm saying? To yes. understand their thought process. Mm -hmm. So you can figure ways to, to help, you know, tweak it. Right. But yeah. you can only do that if you're calm. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. And don't don't say, well, you know what? It was, you know, in my time, this and that. It's a whole different world. We didn't have social media. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what your kids have to go through, it's much tougher than what we have to. But the sad thing is the kids are less resilient. Okay. And we have to teach that resilience through love, through faith, through hope. Wonderful, wonderful. So Gracie Vincent has left us. I have to leave now, sorry, that's okay. She got the bulk of what you were sharing, I'm sure. And she has gone with some valuables with regards to how to deal with anxiety and certain levels of depression and to bring that closer intimate relationship with God going. We just have about six minutes or so to go before we wrap up. But what I want to look at is the continuation of what you were speaking about. And I get from you that you're thinking that parents need to be a role model with regards to how they display themselves, how they manage themselves, and how they display that level of intimacy with God as well as the leaders in the home so that they set the example for the children to follow. How crucial is that as parents even if they have to set the time, let's say you make a timetable where the family comes together and pray before the day begins or at the end of the day, or sometime you make it like not a routine, but something that is so important that you specify a specific time when you know people are available, take the TV off, put the phones away, all the, the devices and the gadgets. Let's just come together and have family time with God. How important is that? for that development and growth with regards to getting that intimacy with God going. That is so important, Andy, because in reality, um, we're not going to be with our kids 24 seven. Right. So they need to know that there is a heavenly father who looks after them. Right. You know, so when you set up the standard of, Hey, we're going to pray together. We're going to take time. Like you say, get rid of the phones and they're going to see mama pray and, and, they're going to see father pray or cousin or whatever. The whole family is praying. The unit is praying. Hmm. And when the unit is praised together, miracles happen. Right. You know, and have them have the ability to bring things to the table. Right. Because that's, that's what's in their lives. And so it starts really, really young. And I'm glad you said they watch us. Yes. So if you're starting to get a yell and scream, you need to take yourself and put yourself in time out and tell your kid, hey, I'll get to you in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because the kids are watching. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, and, and, and sometimes we tell them, well, you need to follow me and do as I say. But they're looking at what you do. <laughs> and if you're not setting the right example, you're going to have some double standards. So it's critical that we be always basically aware. And there are two things in our business that we, we know about that sort of manages those areas. One is emotional intelligence, and the next one is situational awareness. I just wanna share again the thought for the week as we are coming to the end of this wonderful episode of Breaking Out of Depression. The thought for the week is the middle of our struggles at the classrooms of our learning and if we endure to the end, we get the honor of graduating. So as we seek to wrap up at this point in time, we thank you so much for your comments and your questions. Well, we didn't really have much of a question. We had some comments. I am beginning to think that people are so enwrapped and caught up in what you're saying, Dr. Brown, that they can't even think about asking a question at this point in time. It's all good. So as we come to the end, I want to give you the opportunity to say some final words of encouragement to the people that are listening and those who would be seeing or hearing this 
broadcast at a later date. What would you say to them in closing? Oh, in closing, I was just listening to your word of the week or your uh, for the week. For the week, yes, and it's just really great. And I would encourage people to to read Romans five three to five, where it talks about how suffering can produce endurance. Right. And how endurance produces character. Right. And how character produces hope. Right. Wow. And how hope does not put us to shame, and how we can feel God's love, which leads into pouring to our hearts, which is that Holy Spirit. Right. So, and that Holy Spirit that is within us is what helps us create this intimacy. Mm -hmm. It's that Wonderful. spirit within us. Wonderful. So, um, definitely check that out. Uh, I, I'm really thankful that I was able to be on this show here. And if you... Uh, any of you guests would like to know more about me or connect with me, just go on to my website. Um, the easiest one to go to is www.draprilbrown.com. Right. DraprilBrown.com. Right. Wonderful. So thank you so much. Giselle Honoré says, thank you for such valuable info. Indar De Paris says, thanks so much for the session, much needed topic. And Wesley Ryan says, thanks, Dr. Brown, much appreciated. So all that is for you. And yes, we have put up the information with regards to your website so that they can go and look up the information and if possible, make contact with you with some of the amazing stuff that you have shared with us on this program. Thank you so much. So people, as we come to the end, remember to continue to work together as we build this community and we develop our skills and our resources to create a community where people can come together and deal with the challenges of depression, anxiety, withdrawal, burnout, whatever the challenges may be with regards to those areas, we can deal with them. And we can also find ourselves in a position where we can have a greater level of intimacy with ourselves, our spouses, our neighbors, our children, and ultimately, with God. It is possible. We heard of the many different ways in which we can adopt certain techniques and observations and skills that we can grow and develop over time, that we can deal with that the challenges that come, and we know they're going to come from all different walks and areas of life. But as I said before, as Dr. April Brown would have told us, God is able, and he's willing that we get to that place where we can properly manage ourselves, our family, and have that level of intimacy that could take us to a place of comfort that we know he's able, willing, and he will take care of our every single need. Until next episode, I thank you so much for your continued commitment and support. This is your partner in health, happiness, and prosperity, and your brother in Christ, Andy A. Charles, together with our special guest, Dr. April Brown, Doctor of Intimacy, saying so long, Godspeed, God bless, shalom. And remember, do everything you can so that you can overcome and get the opportunity to break out of depression. In that said, Paris says, stay blessed. Thank you, my dear sister. Blessings to you and the family as well. Until next time, bye for now. Stay safe, stay blessed.